Welcome back to another episode, episode number 14 of the Transforming Me podcast. I'm super excited that you decided to join us on this week. I pray that this is blessing you and that as you are being blessed that you will share this with someone else. Amen. Um, This week we want to talk about cultivating intimacy with God in a distracted world. How many of you know that distractors are going to come? They're going to come to try to get us deterred from spending time with God. I don't know about you, but every time I say <clears throat> I want to read my Bible or I want to pray or I want to spend time with God, something always comes up. Something is always distracting. Like when I started this podcast on today, my phone just starts dinging. So I had to restart the podcast because I didn't want a whole bunch of dings. And Um, this this, uh, podcast. And so, um, which is clearly why I need to talk about this this week and understand that distractions are going to come, but they don't have to deter us from what God has called us to do. Amen. And so um, our key scripture this week is going to be Psalms 46 and 10. And it says, be still and know that I am God. Sometimes being still in a world that's busy, in a world where it's all kind of things going on and where distractions are happening left and right, it's real easy to get caught up in what's going on and and not know how to be still. But I want to encourage you today to learn how to be still in the presence of God. Know how um, to trust God in the midst of what you have going on in your life, knowing that no no matter what's going on in our, in our life, that God is still in control. Amen. And so you have to be intentional about your time with God. When distractions come, if you have little kids, I always tell people this, you get up before the kids get up. Because if you get up when they get up, you're not going to be able to get your time in. So if you get up 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour before your kids get up or stay up um, 20, 30 minutes, excuse me, to an hour once they go to bed, That is what you're going to have to do to get your time in because at the end of the day, things are going to happen. You might have to put your phone on Do Not Disturb. You might have to turn your phone off because distractions are going to come. This world is full with distractions. Literally, everywhere you look is distractions. We live in a world that's full of noise. We live in a world that's that's busy. Um, And it's easy to distract us from God's voice. Sometimes... um, When you're wanting to hear from God or you need a word from God, um, you have to really um, be intentional about going somewhere, um, maybe somewhere quiet so you can hear God's voice. Because a lot of of times, like when we're in our houses and sometimes, I mean, I'll go for a drive sometimes just to, or sit in my car just to get quiet so I can hear from God. I'll go in my bathroom. Sometimes I'll just go in the shower. I may stand there a little longer and just, you know, just say, God, I just want to, I want to hear from you. Speak to me Um, because there's so much going on in the world that it's, it's really can be distracting and keep us from hearing the voice of God. Um, and I know that many of us, um, and a lot of people that I talk to, they really want a deeper connection with God. Um, they don't want um, to not hear God's voice or know God's voice. Um, and so because we long for that deeper connection with God, it's going to take us drowning out the distractions to spend more time with God. And the key word that I want to use here is intimacy. And when you think about intimacy, the only thing that I can think about to talk about Um, to get you to understand or maybe that you can identify with is when you're thinking about intimacy, you you look at intimacy between, um, let's use a man and a woman when they're intimate, right? That time that we spend together, that vulnerability that we are with one another. That's really what intimacy is with God, is being able to come before him and be vulnerable, be able to come before him and just be who you know God called you to be and not allow the distractions to keep you from being intimate with God. God understands and knows all things. You cannot hide anything from God. I mean, sometimes we try, but he knows all things and he's looking for us to just be intimate um, with him and understand that the enemy is going to try to distract us from um, intimacy with God. That brings me to point number one, distractions or the intimate, the enemy's intimacy from God. He uses distractions in, in many forms, whether it's technology, whether it's our responsibilities, whether it's our worries, whether it's ministry, whether it's our business, our job, our children, our spouse. I mean, he uses distractions to, to, to stop our intimacy with our father. So technology, um, you know, being on your phone, being on social media, those, there's a time and a place for everything. And so we have to, we have to put things in its proper place and its proper time. And when we're getting ready to spend time with God, 
not social media. You know, you can't spend time with God and be on social media or be on your phone because things are going to pull you in different directions. People are going to text you. Your phone is going to ring. So I always tell people, put your phone on do not disturb or put turn it off, um, whatever you have to do so nothing interferes with your time with God. Responsibilities, we all have them, whether it's our job, whether it's our family, whether it's our business, whatever our responsibilities are. Don't allow our responsibilities to keep us from time with God. Make it a priority to make it a, one of our responsibilities to spend time with God. Um, I know for me, from um, me personally, um, you know, uh, the things that I have to do in my life, I have to prioritize my God. So I get up in enough time in the morning to spend time with him so things don't get in my way. So, cause I know I got this to do at six and my prayer to do at six. And I know that I do my live at eight. So I give God his time. So I have responsibilities, taking care of my husband, um, you know, making sure that he gets his breakfast. So I know what time he gets up. So I get up before my responsibilities start and I stay up later sometimes and my responsibilities end. Why? Because God's time, the intimate see time that I need with my father is so crucially important. Worries, the Bible says, what are you worried about? Like you can, you're not adding anything to your life. If anything, you're taking it away. So don't even let worries keep you from your intimacy with God. And what that can look like is if you know you got things coming up and you, you know, you want to spend time with God and you're stressing and you're begging God, don't worry about it. Just trust God and give him your, give him the cares of, of your life and trust that he's going to work it out for you your ministry or your job or whatever it is that you're doing. Like don't allow the things that you have going on in your life to pull you in a direction away from God, to pull you in a direction away from where God wants to do and the intimacy that he wants. You have to be proactive um, in eliminating the distractions that will be create a wedge between you and your father. Okay. Point number two is, um, <clears throat> stillness in the posture of intimacy. You have to learn to sometimes just be still. The world is so busy that we just go, go, go. And a lot of times we struggle or we are, um, we have trouble with just being still and just being quiet and just hearing from God. Um, you know, Psalms 46 and 10 invites us to be still, it, to pause, to rest, um, to cease from striving. A lot of times people have trouble from that. I don't know about you, but I'll just talk about me. Sometimes just being still and not moving and um, and being quiet before God is, 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 can be challenging because my mind is going so many different directions and I know about this and that I'm thinking about this and I'm thinking about that, but I have to practice being still being quiet so that I could hear God's voice. Um, it's refreshing to hear his voice and for him to talk to you. And I've talked to people that like, well, I don't hear God's voice and I don't know what his voice sounds like. And I get it. I understand, but you have to be still long enough to be able to hear God's voice. And that's sometimes a challenge, but if you really really, really try, you can do it. It's going to require you to be intentional and disciplined, right? To get into the place where you can literally just hear God's voice and just be quiet long enough to hear it. And sometimes it takes time when you're not used to hearing from God on a regular basis and you don't really know God's voice. It's going to take time for you to be quiet um, long enough to be able to hear him and not rush him. And God, I'm here. You got five minutes. Like, don't give God a time limit. I mean, I know that sometimes we have to put our timer on and different things like that, but don't come before I'm like, okay, God, you got five minutes. If he, if you have five minutes to give God a quiet time, just sit there for five minutes to say, Lord, I'm here. And I would love to hear from you. Point number three is knowing um, God is the purpose of our intimacy. Knowing, first of all, that he created us to be intimate with. He is. He said it wasn't good for man to be alone because he knew that he created man for him to worship with him and to spend time with him. That's why he would come and spend time with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. Um, when they were hiding, God didn't understand why they were hiding. I, we, I created you to worship. Like, what's going on? And a lot of times we allow our sins. A lot of times we allow the things that we um, have going on in our life and the, the things that we messed up on and whatever the case may be to keep us from God. I'm telling you today, don't hide. Um, you mess up, repent, get back in right standing with God. Um, that's what the enemy would try to do to use, um, excuse me. He would try to use, um, our mess ups, our hangups, our, you know, our flaws and what we didn't get right. And what we, um, 
when it didn't go the way we wanted it to go to stop us. And I'm here to tell you today, don't let that stop you. Be intentional. If you mess up, if you miss it, if you, um, you know, didn't um, obey God when he gave you a command or didn't do what God told you to do, all you got to do is repent. Just repent. Ask God to forgive you. And trust me, he will forgive you. Amen. Um, know this, that um, the goal the goal, our goal is to be quiet before him so that we can know him in a deeper way. This is our purpose of intimacy with God. Um, coming before him, even if you come before him and say, listen, God, I messed up. He knows you messed up. He's just looking for us to be honest um, and, and, and and say, you know what, God, I don't want to get it wrong. I want to I want to meditate on your word. I want to I want to get it right. Help me um, to get it right with you and to build your character. Um, Ephesians 5 and 1 out of the um, Amplified tells us to be imitators of him, to copy him and follow his directions and in that stillness you can say you know god i want to copy you i want to follow your example i want to do it the way you did it i don't want to do it my way um help me to do this you created me to worship you you created me to spend time with you and this is what i want to do talking to him like be honest and open with god um set aside dedicated time what time do you spend with god throughout the day is it a specific time in the morning the afternoon or the evening i say this all the time and i've said it on this podcast multiple times that we eat three times a day we should at least spend three times a day with God. What is your dedicated times that you spend with the Father throughout the day? This is important that you find free time that you can give God. Sometimes a good time is in your car. If you're by yourself and you have a commute to work, that's a good time to talk to God. You might not be able to get it in a third time in throughout the day. I mean, I always recommend in the morning before you start your day. I always recommend at night before you go to bed. And then throughout the day, whenever you can find quiet time, practice these spiritual disciplines um, that, that can help you um, with your time with God. One more thing that I want to say there is get a journal. Chronicle your, your conversation with the Father when you're talking to Him and He gives you downloads or, you know, He speaks something to you. Um, make sure you get a journal and write it down. I'm working on a journal now that we can use um, called the Be Still journal where we can just be still before God and, and, and he can speak to us and give us downloads and you want to be able to write those things down okay <clears throat> and then my point number five as you can incorporate music um, to worship God. Sometimes it's not just you talking or you just listening, but it's you actually just worshiping the Father. This is another thing. You can get a playlist of music that you like listening to that 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 is worship, and you can use that as time to just magnify God. I know like this morning, um, I was just in worship. I just put on a worship um, CD, and I just worshiped God. I was singing, and I was, you know, um, just, just, just spending time with God through music. Music is a big component. So you can do that while you're driving in a car. That's your time with God, where you're just singing and worshiping God in your car and magnifying God. You know, you could do this with your children, so you can incorporate worship with your children. You and your spouse can do this um, together. I'm, I'm, my goal is to get you to see that, yes, there's distractions in the world. Yes, there's things going on in the world. But you don't have to allow those things that are going on in the world to dictate to you or to keep you in a place where you can't hear from God um, because there's so many things going on around you. Take the time. Make the time. Be intentional about your time with God. It's so important. It's so crucial that we don't allow the distraction and the busyness of this world to keep us from what God created us for, and that's time with Him. Amen. I pray that this podcast bless you today. I pray that you understand the importance of your time with God, the importance of you allowing this God to speak to your spirit, man. The only way we're going to get stronger is we got to get direction from God. If you lean to your own understanding, you're going to mess up 1000% of the time. But if you learn to lean on God, if you learn to depend on God, if you learn to trust God in this busy world, God will speak to you about you, your life, your family, your children, your finances, literally every aspect of your life. If you just put your trust in him. Amen. Well, I pray that this blessed you. Do me a favor, please, and share this with at least five people that could use an encouraging word and that can use a, a, um, um, some direction when they get busy, what they can do in order to get their life right with God. Amen. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for my brother, for my sister that is under the sound of my voice. God, it is my prayer that you would bless them and help them in the busyness of this world to see that they need you and they um, need to find time that they 
they can spend with you. And God, I pray that you would um, help them and that you would keep them and that you would watch over your word to perform it in our life. And God, we give your name the praise. We give your name the glory and we give your name the honor. Bless them and bless them indeed. And it is in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Remember that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you. Have an amazing day on purpose.